We are Team 17014 Fierce Fish, and this is our Control Award video submission. Compared to last season, our drivetrain control has significantly improved. Our team programmed our own custom localization system for moving the robot. Each movement is a path object that is implemented by a path follower class. The robot uses three synchronous industry standard PID controllers and one PIDF controller, all of which aid in keeping the robot's movements on the specified path and correct them in the event of any errors. This system is so accurate that we have been able to completely automate our endgame power shot routine. For the sake of consistency, the drivers line the robot up against the wall parallel to the launch line. The robot reports to the shooting position and then knocks down the power shots. One of the advantages of our localization system is how easily it can be integrated with unrelated programs and subsystems. For example, for troubleshooting purposes, you are able to implement FTC dashboard for tasks such as observing where the robot thinks it is versus where it actually is, and visualizing the behavior of certain paths. For starter stack detection, we decided to use a webcam and implement Google's TensorFlow object detection software. During initialization, the camera can detect if there are 0, 1, or 4 rings present. Once the autonomous op mode is started, the detected case is stored in an enum instance variable so that the op mode can make decisions based on the starter stack read. One of the more unique features in our programming is the fact that we can detect how many rings are in our robot's hopper. In autonomous, this sensor is used to detect if the robot has picked up any rings on case B randomization. If it has, the robot lines up to shoot it. During the driver control period, we integrate LED indicator lights around the robot to alert the drivers as to how many rings are currently in the robot, since this can be tough to see in some areas of the field. The LED indicator lights also double as a match timer so that the drivers never have to lose focus from the robot. It alerts the drivers when there are 5 seconds until endgame, when it is endgame, when there are 5 seconds remaining in the match, and when the match is over. Our robot has a linear actuator for picking up and lifting wobble goals. We needed a way to prevent the actuator from running past its endpoints. However, the simple solution of using a motor encoder was not probable, since we had already used up all of our encoder ports. Instead, we created an innovative solution by installing and programming two magnetic limit switches. Once the limit switch detects the presence of the interior magnet, the actuator can no longer run in that direction past the switch. To make our shooting consistent, we needed our flywheel to run at a constant speed, which we did by implementing a PIDF controller. This control loop keeps the flywheel's top running speed constant regardless of the battery voltage. To aid our drivers in shooting the rings consistently, we run our ring flicker back and forth on a timer. Now we will demonstrate our main autonomous program. Each case, no matter the ring randomization, the robot starts out the exact same way by going to shoot the power shots. Where the auto varies is the placement of the wobble goals and the parking location. Lastly, we would like to showcase some of our driver control abilities. Thank you for watching our Control Awards submission video.